Hello. Welcome to a brand new episode of Gadget Nation and me, Adam Carruthers. We're back here, Cat in the Box, in Empire Damansara. Plenty to show you on the show today. Going quite tablet heavy. So if you've been looking around for some options, what could suit your purposes, your budget, maybe we could help you out. Plus, we've of course got plenty more. So, let me go find a seat and we can start. Google has introduced Project Ara, the concept of a device where it can be kept on upgrading by using interchangeable parts. Google plans to release Project Ara in a test capacity in Puerto Rico later this year. The aim is to make the basic system comprising a frame, battery, CPU, and Wi-Fi. LG has released an official video of its newly designed watch Urbane, showing off what the next step will be after its G Watch R. Expected to appear at Mobile World Congress, the Watch Urbane is LG's take on classic watch design meeting smartwatch functionality, just in time to head off the Apple Watch attempt. Samsung has showcased a full lineup of innovative monitors and a smart signage TV at the Samsung Forum in Bangkok. The cutting-edge solutions include curved and ultra-high-definition UHD monitors, most notably the SE790C, SD590C, SE510C, and SD850, that feature unparalleled advancements in technology and design to deliver an immersive, comfortable, seamless, and brilliant viewing experience. If you can see this message, it means I have actually succeeded in my mission to find some really cool tablets just for you. So, we scoured around and found two very contrasting devices, but technically both tablets. Let's see if this might suit your purposes. Message over. Okay, I've got two devices either side of me, and although they're similar in some ways, they are also rather different in many other ways. To my right, we have something from Lenovo, which is uh, quite large, as you can see right there. It's massive, just putting my hand in front. Now, to my left, though, we've got something much, much smaller. This one's from HP, as you can see right there. Now, apart from the obvious size differences, it's also very different in terms of price. Lenovo, much more expensive. Almost, not quite, but almost double the price of the one we have here from HP. So, how do they differ apart from price point and obvious size? Well, let's find out firstly with this. All right, let me just show you what we got. This is the HP Pavilion X2. I'm just gonna detach the tablet aspect to show you first. Obviously, you've got the magnetic thing here to connect it to the keyboard that you saw right there. Along the side, we got micro SD. I love having a micro SD slot. Internal memory in this is 32 GB, so obviously, depending how you use it, depending on the individual usage, it could prove very useful. Maybe you have no use for it entirely, obviously, up to the user experience. We've got uh, lots of different ports. We've got USB 2.0, we've got USB 3.0 as well. We've got the usual myriad of features there. We've got the power button on this side. And on the other side, not too much either, just the headphone jack, really. So, pretty cool. I mean, the tablet itself is slightly under 10 millimeters in terms of thickness, and it's very nice. In fact, the tablet combined together is less than one kilogram. So, with the keyboard and this, it's never gonna be too heavy, just feeling the size. In terms of the keyboard that you can see right there, very responsive keyboard, I'm a big fan of that. And I think it all slots in rather nicely if you're just gonna carry it around like such. So this is on magnetically as well. So it's not just gonna be flopping about, etc. And when you're good to go, ugh, just unhook it like such, pull this up, and you are pretty much good to go just like that. So very, very, very nifty. Now one thing, that I should stress in terms of the weight, in terms of the battery usage, is this is fanless it's using obviously the Intel uh, Bay Trail. So, with that in mind as well, that does help the overall experience. The battery life in this is ooh, um, but somewhere between 11 to 12 hours, depending on an individual's usage. So, pretty outstanding. If you're going to be on a long haul trip, if you're going to be out all day, this should, on paper at least, be able to last you for quite a while, so very, very good job. It's got two GB of RAM, like I touched on the storage as well, which is expandable. Lots to love about it. There's also this camera on the front that you can see, standardized pretty much, but one thing I should add, on the back, 
there is no camera here. So if you're using that for your purposes, I know some people like to take their tablets out and snap pictures like that. You won't be able to do that unless it's on the front facing camera right there. I'm gonna slot that back into place. Now, lots of love about it, very portable, very responsive keyboard, also very light, as you can see right here. Very easy to carry around, lots of plus points. Now, let's move on to this, because this is a big boy. So, from this to this, this is from Lenovo, and it is actually not too heavy. This is a Yoga Tablet 2 Pro, and it is mammoth. This was 10.1. This, on the other hand, is 13 inches. So a big difference in terms of size, and wow. It's actually much lighter than I expected, and there's a lot to love about this as well. For example, if I just close the stand on the back, you can see right there, unlike the previous alliterations, just a simple click of the button there, and the kickstand will come out, and it feels sturdy. I know it's just a thin piece of aluminium, but it feels very sturdy when your device is propped up, and depending how you want to use it, maybe you could use it to give a bit of support when it's flat facing, you're writing out an email, if you're just watching something, or if you just want to close it up and not have it in the way at all, it's entirely up to you. Just gonna pop it out again. Very, very nifty. Now, in terms of how it is around the side, we have obviously the standard power button, etc., volume, headphone jack, and we flip it round to the other side. This is where it gets interesting. You see that? You see that right there? Wondering what that is? That's projector, believe it or not. That can project onto the wall. Uh, it's not HD or anything, and it's 50 inches, and obviously the lighting, the brightness is not too great, so make sure uh, the ambient lighting isn't too bright. And you should be good to go. Obviously, it's something really cool, but not for everybody, but it will reflect whatever is here on the screen. It's very easy to turn on as well. I really, really do like this. I think there's a lot to love about it, and it's very, very powerful. It's very, very nifty. So if I'm just gonna put it down and actually I'll put it on the kickstand again. There's obviously a very, very bright screen. This has done a fantastic job. Sometimes when you get the bigger screens, perhaps it's not quite as clear. Not with Lenovo, they've really gone full out. In terms of the power inside, 1.8 gigahertz quad-core Intel processor. So it should be able to run most apps out there, bigger apps, etc. Shouldn't have any trouble lagging if you're going to be browsing websites or whatever you want to do with your tablet. So, very, very impressive. It's got an 8 megapixel camera here on the rear as well. And you can see right there JBL speakers. Very cool. Very, very cool. And it gives a nice bit of clarity, a nice little bit of sound. Battery life in this is even better. I'm hearing it's closer to about 15 hours than what we saw there. It's using Bay Trail uh, Intel as well inside. So obviously that helps in terms of how heavy it is and the battery consumption. Done a very, very nifty job and I'm thoroughly impressed, I have to say. So there's lots to love about both devices, from the 10.1 inch 2-in-1 uh, device here to this massive 13.3 inch mammoth device, I guess is the only word I could say from Lenovo. Now I did touch on price points, this one is a shade under 1,200, this one is a shade under 2,000 ringgit. So this has got the pro title to it and it is very snappy, it's very nice, the screen itself is really, really nifty, as you can see right there, QHD right there in the corner. I'm a big fan of this, but it depends on your usage. If you need something of a keyboard, this would be better suited to you. And obviously, in terms of budget, it's a, a big, big difference as well for a lot of people out there. And But there's also similarities. I mean, they both got the micro SD, which for me, I love. But this one, micro SD is hidden in the back. This one is on the side. But really, it's almost apple and oranges with these two devices. They're both tablets, but they're both so very different in so many ways. This one has all the bells and whistles that you need, the JBL speakers 2.1. It's got eight megapixel camera on the back. It's got a 1.3 in the front, whereas the Hewlett Packard one has only got the front facing camera. But it does have the keyboard. Very hard to compare the two because they're so different. 
but they're both very good for their price points and for the purposes that they serve. Worth checking out, worth having some fun with, both very light, easy to carry around, and both a good start to 2015.